Paul Godwin was born and raised in Philadelphia before attending Penn State Fresh from 2004 to 2006. He then transferred to Penn State University Park and joined the Gamma New Chapter of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity. He graduated in 2008 and landed a job at ESPN. He was given the task of once at ESPN, he was given the task of creating a new brand there, their 30 for 30 documentary series. Fast forward a year, being awarded the 2009 George Foster Peabody Award, followed by two Webby Awards and three Sports Emmy nominations, in the first three years with ESPN only provided only proved that his hard work was paying off. One of, if not the biggest highlights in Kyle's young professional career was being awarded the 2014 Sports Emmy Award for most outstanding documentary series. After a strategic period of planning and counsel from family and mentors, Kyle left the ESPN confines in, of Bristol, Connecticut to take on the title of CEO of Marvelous Entertainment, a film and multimedia production company based in the emerging film community of Atlanta, Georgia. And now, without further ado, please join me in welcoming Mr. Kyle Dunn. I'm not lecturing y'all. This is in you know lecture hall. I'm not a professor. I'm just here. One individual talking to another individual. So as we, as we say, like we are. Oh, come on, we are. Pense. We are. Pense. Thank you. You're welcome. Appreciate it. All right. So uh, I'm here today uh, because obviously you know I, I, I reached out to Dean Selden and uh, Carmen Frost and, and the College of Communications to to share some wisdom with y'all and, and my experiences you know, uh, from you know. Uh, obviously graduating from Penn State and moving on after Penn State to, you know, now at the point where I, I found my purpose within life. Um, so I just wanted to kind of give y'all um, an introspect as to what I've been through and how you can, you know, take whatever nuggets you can from, you know, what I speak to you today uh, to use it into your own careers and, you know, carry yourselves uh, further. Um, so, uh, as you said, I'm from Philadelphia, um, grew up, uh, I was big into arts, sports, um, theater, uh, dance, all that stuff. I, I pretty much did everything. Um, but when I grew up, I thought that, you know, uh, the biggest thing I was going to do was play in the NBA. I thought I was going to be 6'5", I thought I was going to be dunking everybody and go to a scholarship. <laughs> Some school would probably do because that was my favorite team back then, or still is, but um, that's where I thought I was going. So uh, I didn't go to be 6'5", as y'all can see, it didn't really happen. But um, I realized that um, I still wanted to be in the NBA. My dream was to somehow work in management, work in the NBA. Um, so I'm actually going to uh, go through a, I decided instead of, like, typical lectures or presentations you see, um, there's a lot of words on the screen, I chose pictures. Um, pictures do more for you than, than words do. Um, so, um, you know, here, obviously, like I said, I played basketball, I thought I was going to go to the league, it didn't happen. Um, however, um, I still wanted to apply myself in the same way. So, um, I don't know if anybody knows who this guy is to the right. Does anybody know who he is? Right? Yeah, on the right. Not, 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 um, not this guy. Pat Croce. Pat Croce, you got you. So Pat Kochi was a physical therapist for the, sec the Sixers, um, specifically brought in for a guy named Sean Bradley. Turned out to be a posterized you know, Duncan um, dummy for the league. Uh, but his job was to bring him in and make him stronger. So Pat Kochi was a physical therapist. I went to school because I thought that you know, after 10 years like Pat Kochi, I could become the president of the Sixers. That's what happened to him. I figured if I do the same thing, you know, I've, I've become a physical therapist, and I probably can, you know, be in the NBA still. I can't play, but I can control it. Um, again, so I, I get to Burks. I decided to go into kinesiology. Uh, has anybody ever taken, like, human anatomy, biology here? Anybody? No, all right, good. You don't need to. It's really, really, really tough. Um, you know, I, I took it my first semester, and I'm studying hard. I'm getting a 40 on the test with a curve. That's like a D. I'm like, all right, this ain't working. I take my second test, um, the curve again, I get a 45. That's a C minus. I'm like, I'm progressing, but this isn't good enough. Um, I know how GPAs work. You start off high, and then you, I mean, you can always work your way down, but it's harder to work your way up. So I decided, what do I want to do? How can I change, you know, what I'm doing now? So um, what I decided to do was I decided to, to uh, switch majors and go into sports broadcasting journalism because I like talking about sports. Um, I like writing, 
and I was always consumed with ESPN. ESPN was always on my TV day and night, fell asleep to it, woke up to it, um, all that. So I was like, okay, I transferred up here to uh, main campus, um, joined uh, Alpha Phi Alpha, as you said, a gamma new chapter. Um, Dean Seldon always uh, was a big help in terms of my development and, and speaking with him, just picking brains and, and things of that nature. So I made it four years, I got out, but I needed an internship to graduate. So I wasn't sure exactly what I wanted to do. Um, so I was like, all right, what, what, can I, what kind of job can I get? Because I need this to graduate. So uh, what happens is I, 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 my father runs into uh, a friend of his, unfortunately, at a funeral of a friend of mine, a childhood friend had got killed. And in the moment, instead of asking, you know, my dad was there to comfort him, but he asked how I was doing. He told him, oh, well, Kyle's about to graduate. He's looking to get a degree in sports broadcasting journalism. So what is it that, you know, we can uh, do to help him? Or, you know, what's he looking to do? So again, I wanted to be at ESPN. He said, well, I think I got a buddy there who can help you out. Um, so he reached out, a guy by the name of Fred Brown gives me a call. So I have a, this is my first lesson in, in, in business or when it comes to careers, is either you tell the truth right away, when people ask you a question, you tell them either I don't know it or I do know it, or you pick out the little nuggets that you know and you just talk confidently about it to the point where the people are convinced that you know what you're talking about. Well, that's what I did. When I had the interview, he said, well, what do you know best? I said, I know basketball, I know football, I know a little bit of baseball and hockey, um, but mainly basketball and football. He said, cool, we're going to ask you about baseball. I was like, that's not what I was expecting, but okay. I watched ESPN enough so I know the headlines and what's going on. So what I decided to do was, I, uh, you know, I answered the questions as best as I could. He said, Kyle, um, my daughter went to Penn State, so I like you already. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to bring you in for an internship. I get an internship with ESPN. Um, and I tried to dress as nice as I could the whole time. Everybody else is in there, polo shirts, jeans. I had shirt, tie, suit, whatever I could to separate myself visually from the competition. Anybody who was looking to, um, you know, set their self apart, it definitely, it, it comes from the eyes first. When people see how, you're, how you address or your appearance, um, that was the first step. So um, besides that, I told them that one of the things I wanted to do was make sure that I had a job coming up because I graduate. This internship is what I need to, you know, uh, finish my degree. Um, I was lucky enough to get a job as a, a PA trainee um, in the trainee program doing Sports Center. So, did everybody in here watch ESPN? Is everybody? Yeah, for the most part? All right, cool. So, you understand how like highlights work. You see it for about 45 seconds, 30, 45 seconds, a minute, unless it's like a really, really big game. Well, that's one of the toughest things because you got three hours to watch the game and you only have about 20 to 30 minutes to turn this highlight into some that people remember in 30 seconds. So they grade you off of this. You have a, a committee, somebody who represents you like a lawyer in front of a committee or council to you know, give you a, 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 a full-time position. So I, I have an individual who's representing me. He's been there for a while. He's done plenty of people. They've all been successes. He leaves the company in the midst of like four months. I get a new lady. She's brand new. So she doesn't, I'm the first person she's ever worked with. So it was like going from Johnny Cochran to my cousin Vinny. They had, he had, this is his first case and he's trying to, she's trying to win it for me. That didn't happen. I wasn't, I wasn't kept in the program. Now I'm, I'm not even front. I was crying. I was, I was distraught because it's my dream job. I wanted to be at ESPN. I've been dreaming about this for a long time. And you tell me that I'm not good enough to cut a 30 second highlight. I wasn't playing in the game. I just put it together. Like how hard is it to tell a story about a highlight? It's a game. So instead of complaining or, you know, whining, I decided to, um, send an email and have meetings with all the top executives at ESPN. Um, not to complain or beg for a job, but I wanted to let them know how flawed their system was. So, um, you know, I get, I get to ESPN and I decide that, you know what, this isn't, this isn't, what, I, this isn't what I want. Like, I'm, I'm not here to just be used or, you know, taken advantage of. So, I, I, somehow, some way, I get a phone call. I never applied for this job. I get a phone call from HR saying, hey, we got this job in content development. We would love for you to interview. I need a job, I got a year lease, I've been here for six months, I need to pay this rent, so it don't matter. Whatever y'all need, I'm, I'm gonna do it. So I go in the interview, again, that same lesson. If you don't know what you're talking about, be honest in the beginning, or you know, like really be confident in the little nuggets you know. They said, Kyle, we got 30 stories for 30 years of ESPN's existence, we got 30 different directors, we don't know who is gonna be you know, uh, on board, but we would love to have you. You've got some experience with ESPN. So, you know, I decided, all right, let's do it. I passed, I got the interview, got the job. Fast forward, um, you, anybody heard of the Peabody Award? You heard of it? 
So it's, it's out of Georgia. George Foster Peabody is one of the highest journalism awards you can get. Um, Tom Brokaw just got his, and he's been in the game for 30 years. I got my, my first year in, in communicate or in the profession. So already I'm thinking like, wow, this is amazing. Like I'm on the right path. This has to be, you know, I had to be in the right place. I was supposed to get let go from Sports Center and doing highlights because I'm supposed to be telling films and documentaries and long-term stories. So, you know, I, I end up uh, two years later. I win, you know, uh, uh, two Webby Awards. I'm nominated for uh, Emmys, uh, but never won. We'll go, get dressed up, see, meet all these nice people, but we'll never win. So I'm like, well, dang, man, like I don't, I don't get it. So, you know. One of the things I want you guys to, to appreciate is everybody in here seniors or what, what years we got in here? Junior. junior? Everybody pretty much juniors? Freshmen. Fre freshmen. That's perfect. Freshmen. All right. Perfect. So for freshmen, it's even better because you got, you got four years to, to really soak in everything and, and take the words I'm saying uh, to heart. Um, and even for juniors and seniors, I want y'all to, to really take it to heart as well. But um, I want y'all to understand and enjoy the experience that you're, you're going through now. I mean, everybody wants to, oh, I'm a junior. I can't wait to graduate. I can't wait to get out of here. But I promise you, these are the best four years of your life. You will never meet as many people. You will never have as many experiences. Um, the memories, you can't, you can't change them. You can't take them away. Um, so please enjoy it. And, and one of the things I did while at ESPN was I tried to make sure I enjoy every experience. So um, you know, one of the things I got to work on was a, a documentary on Bo Jackson, where one of, the, one of my favorite athletes of all time, because he was just good at everything. Anything he touched, he pretty much killed it. So um, I got a chance to soak it in. Um, Here's at Tribeca Film Festival. Funny story about this picture is, so I, I was just, you know, just on Instagram. You know how I take a picture, you flex a little bit. So, you know, I get on Instagram, and I'm, I'm, the reason I'm not looking at the camera is because I got my homegirl holding the camera while I'm looking at her take the picture. And then these cameramen come by, and they start giving me the paparazzi treatment. And I'm like, well, that's cool. Keep flicking. Keep, I'm just standing here. <laughs> so they, they keep taking all these pictures, and ESPN had hired these cameramen to do it. So when they get the film back, they're like, why you got a picture of Kyle? Like, he's, he's nobody, but they thought I was somebody because I seemed the part. To me, that was huge. I kept this picture, this, and that's why I think it's on the poster here, you know what I mean? Like, it was, it was, it was a big deal to me. Um, so, you know, I, but I, I enjoyed it. I really enjoyed the experience. So, you know, being there, I got to meet people like, you know, Kevin Connolly, who is um, obviously, you know, uh, everybody knows him from Entourage, but just how many times can you share a drink at a bar talking about a film that you worked on with a guy who you've been watching on TV all the time? You know, just really soaking those things in, um, enjoying the experience. Again, um, Kevin Hart bumped into him outside of a bathroom and was like, <laughs> yo, at, at ESPN, first of all, you get starstruck the first couple times you see like athletes or stars. Like, man, I can't believe it. I'm like, yo, that's Jerry, that's Jerry Rice or you know, that's Emmett Smith or, or whoever the, you know, the player may be. But after a while, you realize that they're your colleagues. Like, you work with these people all the time. You can't run up to him. He in pizza line just like you. He put his pants on just like you. I mean, they might be more expensive, but he still put his pants on the same way you do. Um, so again, you know, just enjoying the experience. I seen him, I was like, listen, I'm from Philly. You know, I love the work that you do. Um, again, Maurice Claret, I worked on a film last year, uh, uh, almost two years now, um, on Youngstown, Ohio, and Ohio State. Maurice Claret, amazing story, humble guy. Uh, won a championship as a freshman. Didn't uh, do the th right things by the NCAA, so he got kicked off the team and challenged the NFL to go early. He won the first case, but they appealed. He lost it. His life went downhill from there. Went, ended up in prison, um, things of that nature. But in that process, he was really humble and learned um, all the things that you're supposed to learn as a, as a man in, in, a, in, a, in a tough situation. Um, in talking with him, this is when I had more responsibility. So, you know, they actually sent me out. I went from can't do a highlight, you're not good enough to do highlights, to now you're good enough to represent ESPN Films in Ohio at, at the University of Ohio to, you know, or Ohio State to make sure that everything goes smoothly. Um, so it, it, was, it was perfect. It was, it was like, all right, you know, this, this is great for me. But um, another thing, nobody even knows who this guy is. If you, if you know who this guy is, I got a 20 for you right now. <laughs> well, y'all don't count. <laughs> By the way, this, this is my parents, so they, they, I love them. They're they, they super supportive, but they know who he is. This, this guy's name is John Skipper. He's the president of ESPN. He's the new president of ESPN. Um, so when you make a lasting impression, People notice that. So when I say, you know, dressing up in ties, people recognize you or, you know, uh, carrying yourself a certain way. He might not remember my name to this day, but he knows my face. If he sees me every time, it's, hey, how's it going? How you doing? What, what are you working on now? Because the, the same way that you treat people when you walk around campus, how you doing? Shaking hands, holding doors for people. They remember. Even if it's, hey, how's your day going? What classes are you taking? You might not be asking and, you know, I really want to know what you're doing. But at the same time, people remember that you took the time to ask them. That's all that matters. 
he was one of those people who I recognized early on that if this, if this is the president who can stop by and ask me how I'm doing, then who am I as the low guy on the totem pole? I can do the same thing. Um, so um, uh, impressions are, 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 are awesome. Um, but um, one of the people do, that I, I really appreciated or admired um, was this woman here. Her name is Erin Light, and she's a producer that I work with. Now, I used to come in. I went from working 5 p.m. to 2 a.m. in highlights. That's what you do because the games don't go on during the daytime. They go on at nighttime. So you come in around 4, you prepare, they tell you what game, you work on it. You stay till 2 a.m. So my life was miserable. I'm not going to lie. I hated it. I didn't like going to work and getting off at 3 in the morning. I'm waking up at 12 in the afternoon. When I'm waking up to talk on the phone, everybody at lunch, they can't talk to me or they at work. So it was my, my whole social life was off. Um, but now I'm working 9 to 5, um, really 9 to 9 because I had to work so hard. I'm doing 30 films or, you know, splitting them. So maybe 15 and my other you know, counterpart was doing 15. Uh, so th this woman saw me working very hard and was like, Kyle, what is it that you want to do? I said, well... You know, I want to uh, produce my own film. Like, I like producing films. I like telling stories. I like documenting, you know, things that's going on. So she said, perfect. You know, I'm going to get you from, you know, your regular duties, which was, you know, if, say, you're Spike Lee. I'm like, all right, Spike, what, what, what you need? Um, so my, the producer, who she, who she is, she would connect us. So now, I'm, my Rolodex, I, I work with Ice Cube, Spike Lee, uh, John Hawk, uh, Steve James, all these notable directors, but it's a, a personal basis. So when we when we talking, it's hey John. It's not hey Mr. Hawk, hey Mr. Lee. It's yo Spike. What what do you need? So he would ask me. All right, I'm doing a film on Kobe. I need video of Kobe doing push-ups in high school. Now I'm I got good to this point, so I can find anything. You know, if ESPN ain't got it, we ain't got it, cause Kyle gonna find it for you. So that that was how it worked. So she's like, right, we're gonna take you from that role, and we want to get you more involved with films and you know getting behind the scenes. So I want you to be on my hip and soak up everything that I have for you. So you know, with that said, she was like. She did a film on the 99ers, on the uh, 1999 Women's World Cup. She brought me along, let me sit in the room and kind of see how things were going. So um, here is a picture like Mia Hamm, um, Brandi Chastain, if you remember, like Brandi Chastain is the one that takes off her shirt, whips it around when they win. Um, so I, I had to do everything from picking them up at the airport. I had to pick Brandi up at the airport. In LA, Pasadena, I don't know if you ever get a chance, but please visit. It's a beautiful city. Um, they, have, uh, th they have the Rose Bowl there. So I told you, I my dream was like be a professional. Well, I couldn't play football. My schedule didn't allow growing up. But when I was out there on the field, I was doing little cuts and cuts like, <laughs> all right, you know what I mean? This, this, this is, this is going to make it for me. But, you know, I was soaking in, again, soaking in the experience. Um, talking and asking Mia Hamm, you know, what's it like to be the, the Michael Jordan of soccer? You know, she's the best woman of all time in terms of soccer. Um, but this, this day kind of changed my life in terms of what it, what it took or what, it, uh, what was required to put on a, a production or you know, a film set. So we had a crew of about 80 people out there and there's only two people telling them what to do. Anything they said, they do it. Move this set, they do it. So I'm like, all right, you need, you need leadership qualities. You need to command people, but have them to the point where they respect you. Not telling them what to do, like, hey, get up right now and do that. Say, listen, I'm gonna need you to do this in about five minutes because you know, this is important for this next scene. People listen better when you give them a, a time you know, a, a basis to, to work off of. So uh, this, again, uh, an important day for me in, in terms of my development. So when I come back to Bristol, I'm flying back, you know, they're like, Kyle, you did a great job. We want to put you into um, you know, the, the, the chair now and start having you direct and you know, put crews together, ask questions. So uh, 30 for 30, they have this segment called The Vault, which is uh, like a 30 to one minute uh, segment in the film where they allow you to you know, bring in somebody who is a part of the, uh, the film experience but isn't in the film itself. So one we did on Broke, we interviewed Keyshawn Johnson, not because he's broke, but because he understood what it's like to be, <laughs> like, you know, to be a player. You know, he's, he, he knows what it takes to be in the NFL and have lots of money and then you know, retire and try and figure out life after that. So we interview him. Um, another person, just Mel Kuyper, who is on NFL, he's always talking about the draft. Um, you know, just a great experience. So I learned, I, this is where I brought in my, you know, college communication, my journalism, you know, uh, you know, practices of, you know, asking the right questions, but not just going down a list of questions in which, you know, I have written already. But, all right, if you give me a great answer, now I need, to, I need you to expand upon that. I need to use my journalistic, you know, uh, talents to really get the best out of the interview. Even though it's 30 seconds, I might have 20 minutes, 30 minutes of a great interview where I can use it later on. It was practice for me. Um, so one day, you know, I'm flying back, and to me, I, you know, this picture, I, I, I called it, uh, this is like the flight of dreams. 
bright future. You can't see my face, it's just bright. You didn't see, I, I, I wasn't on the plane like just listening to music that day. I was in deep thought, coming back from an interview, and I'm like, well, man, you know, I'm not really, you know, I, I love my job. I love the way people respond to me with my job, you know, when I tell them what I do. Um, but if I can do this for them and I'm making millions of dollars, why can't I do this for myself? You know, why would I, why, they're, they're not promoting me. I'm, I'm getting passed over. Well, my department was 10 people. My department could fit in this whole section right here, but yet everybody's getting promotions but me. So I'm like, okay, you know, I got I to gotta do something. I got I to gotta change it up. So I, I started, you know, talking to my friends and, and my family members and, you know, just giving them my ideas, just feeling it out, see how things were going. So I, I started planning, you know, my exit. I always wanted to own my own company. I always wanted to be my own boss and retire at a certain age. So, um, you know, I, I started, you know, thinking deeply. Um, so, you know, if y'all could, just tell me, t when y'all look at this picture, what do y'all see? Like, feel free, you don't got to raise your hand, just, what you see? Link fence. Link fence, what, what you see? And what you see? Uh, you said Link Fence? The city's like way back there. City, the city and the skyline on the way in the back. So perception is everything. I took this picture because when you see a Link Fence, some people see the Link Fence, some people see the far future. They see the distance. They see how, well, maybe these fences to some might be holding them back. It might be in the way. Or some of us might see what's in the far background. Like, oh, you know what? I'm not looking at what's in front of me. I'm not looking at what's restricting me. I got a vision. I see it further away. Again, when you look at this picture, what do you see? Trees. <laughs> what, do you, what do you see? Anybody else? Tracks. Tracks. Cool. So one of my favorite places to walk, this is in Stone Mountain, Georgia. Um, one of my favorite places to walk, it's, a, it's a, a trail that I'll go run sometimes. But again, this is perception. The tracks, sometimes you don't see you know, where you're going all the way. You got the end goal in mind, but you still got the tracks in the foundation. You know your tracks. When a, when a conductor gets on this, on this railway, he has no idea if this goes off a cliff, goes down a hill, turns right or left. He's just trusting the tracks that he's been put on. He knows that somebody before him has put the tracks there and he's laid it down for them to have and move forward. Well, it's the same, the same is true. If you, if you feel like you see the end goal, you know there's been somebody that come before you or there's been tracks, that means there's, there's something laid down for you to follow and go upon and, and follow that and, and do what you've been put here to do, which is in the process of finding your purpose. So did anybody see this? This is Felix Bumgarner. He jumped out from space, right? This was a life-changing day for me because so many people, I had an argument with somebody like, why would he do that to his family? What if he died? What if you know, it didn't work out the way he wanted it to? The point is not that what if it didn't work, but what if it does work? So you're looking at the end goal, you see the far goal is, you know, you making a difference or you changing the world. And then you know you got tracks here and it's been people to do it before you. We got plenty of, of leaders who have, have done game changing things. So you see that. Then you got a guy here who is willing to risk it all just to be the first. He's, I, can, I can jump out of this plane, I can take a leap of faith and whatever happens, happens. But I know I'm here for a reason. Well, it's the same is true for you, you know, now. Like obviously you're here, you're in school, you're pursuing a passion. But it's not just like you're going to do this because I want to do, you know, I want, I want to, some, somebody might want to write a paper. Some might want, want to start their own paper. Some might want to work for a television company. Some might want to start their own television company. But you got to take that leap. You got to take that chance and say you were the first. So this picture when you walked in is a picture uh, when I graduated. This is my grandmother, my late grandmother. Her name is Marva Willis. She is, was a teacher, um, um, a really just a, a great woman. Um, and I, I think that the reason I, I chose this picture is because she, she, she meant a, a lot to me in terms of just, you know, support and development. And obviously I said, you know, my family's here as well. And, you know, it's, it's, it's huge. But when I, when I was talking about taking this leap of faith and leaving, you know, because my family and my friends love me so much, they were like, Kyle, why would you leave a stable job? Why would you leave ESPN? Why would you, why would you go against the grain? You get benefits. You got a good job. Don't leave. <laughs> she was one of the first people to say, she asked me why? I told her why, and that was it. She said, I support you. That's it. Whatever it is you need. And I'm like, you always pay for everything. I appreciate it. This time, let me do it on my own. And when I'm ready, then you know, we'll go from there. Well, she wasn't able to see it or see me get there. So, but that, that was my, my first line of support of reason why. So what I did was I decided to name my company after her, Marvelous Entertainment. Her name is not spelled wrong. I spelled it right on purpose. So when people tell me, hey, you spelled it wrong, I say, correction, I spelled it right. 
It's named after my grandmother, and that's, that's the reason why. When, when people look at this, our letters are M-E, Marvelous Entertainment. But it's also, my, the slogan is, it's not about me, Marvelous Entertainment. It's about us, all of us, collectively, changing, changing lives, changing views. It's a thought-provoking, life-inspiring, content-driven film and multimedia production company. So if there's anything to change your life, anything to inspire you, anything to document good that's going on, I remember she came down to um, Thurl High School with a group of, of, of people for the civil rights tour, right? And I, I didn't get paid for it, but what I did was I took my cameras, two cameras you see right there, I took them out to Thurl High School, and I wanted to tape it. Why? Because these kids were inspiring other kids. They were high school students that whether you knew it or they told you, you changed their lives in certain ways. That's what my company does. We, we document and, and, and capture moments of inspiration. So named after, that's my reason why. You know, my family, anybody can be proud of it because they know why, right? So this right here is my new home. I moved from Bristol, Connecticut to, I know I don't live on this, and I, this ain't my balcony. <laughs> like it's not actually my home, but <laughs> this city is my home. This is Atlanta. I live in Atlanta now. I live in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, you know, I chose Atlanta over uh, Connecticut. I looked at tax incentives, so I did my research. Because my family and people and friends and mentors challenged me so much, I went into great length to make sure that I can answer them. If I didn't have an answer, I was honest. I said, I don't know. But when I come back, I'm going to have something for you. So what I did was, for a whole year, I come back. My, my grandfather was one of the people. He's like, oh, what about this? And I'm like, man, Papa, you give me every time. Like, just can't let me live. But I appreciated it because it, it made me think outside the box. So, you know, I, I move. Um, this is, you know, uh, you know, one of my clients uh, did a, a Kickstarter, you know, um, campaign for I Love College, kids who you know, want to stay in college, I mean, want to go to college or, you know, seeing, um, the, seeing a brand that would provoke thought. So he has, you know, shirts or book bags that say, you know, millionaire mindset, future genius, rocket scientist, stuff to inspire kids. So he was like, he never met me, but through word of mouth and through, you know, networking and the power of networking and enjoying experiences, I met somebody who said, you know, Kyle did some work for us. Yo, you should link up with him. He does like positive stuff. No booty shaking videos, positive stuff. So I'm like, cool. He reached his goal. His goal was like $8,000. He reached it within like 30 days because of the video I did. He didn't pay me a lot of money, but the gratitude and the amount of work that I've got after him paid off in the long run. Um, so again, I chose Atlanta over you know, uh, California because I was tired of cold, grew up in Philly, been up here in Penn State, went to Connecticut. I'm tired of snow. I'm done with snow. We're going somewhere warm. So I chose Atlanta. Obviously, it's like the new, new Hollywood, especially for you know African American you know uh, actors and you know filmmakers is is big right now. Um, so I get down there. I link up with a group of people. Great amount of uh, respect for. Um, so we're interviewing for one of my. So I have different pockets of friends. Just like people here should be in different groups. You shouldn't just be in one organization. You should be in multiple. It's the same thing when it comes to networking. You should have pockets of people that you deal with. So um, we're here, this is called Inside the Industry, where we get a behind the scenes look at what it takes to get there. One of the people we're in interviewing in that red shirt, his name is Rob Hardy. He's, um, uh, I don't know if you ever heard of his films, but you probably have, like Stomp the Yard, Takers, This Christmas, Think Like a Man. Um, he's got tons and tons of experience. So we tried to sit down with him, talk about how he got there, how he developed the skills, you know, so that we could show other people when they go to YouTube or online, they can see exactly um, how he did and developed. Um, again, another friend took a, the same path as me. I aligned myself with people who took the same path. So my friend played football for Duke, realized that it wasn't working for him. Uh, not, now he wasn't going to meet that dream of playing in the NFL. So he decided, you know what, I'm going to quit my job. Even though my parents don't think it's a good thing, I'm going to you know, do what I, I think I'm called here to do, which is to inspire fitness and change within body. So we did a health, fitness, and wellness tour. Walked around talking about how to you know, get your money right, how to think properly, how to get your, you know, eat properly, how to how work out. Um, it's, it's grown to the point where now he's got his own, he built his own, you know, facility, got hundreds of clients now. Again, taking that leap of faith, regardless of what people say, if you think you got your tracks and you got your purpose, you know, do it. Um, uh, so I, I use this picture of Obama because obviously he's the top, you know what I mean? There was a lot of memes on him or what he, what he th was thinking at the moment, but just to show you that even though at the top, you can do whatever you want. Everything isn't good. Everything isn't easy. I'd be lying if I sat here or stood up here and told you that it was, it was sweet, that everything was good, that I had no struggles. No, I w that's, that's not how life works. 
you know, every good it does it does some bad too. So you know I've had I've had some issues with you know clients not wanting to give the money they thought because they didn't feel that you know I deserved the money I did. But I'm a three-time Emmy nominee, Peabody Award winner, Webby Award winner. I deserve everything. If I was getting paid you know over a fifty thousand and up, you're not going to cheat me now, regardless if you think because I left. And it's not happening, so you know I w I'll be lying to say it's not struggles. It's struggles, but it's worth it. It's rewarding. Um, has anybody ever done vision boards? Yeah. If you haven't, I suggest y'all do it when y'all when y'all leave over the summer, whatever the case may be. This is these are my these are my thoughts. Uh, I, I cut them out. It took me about two days to do this because I'm just meticulous like that. I like to be perfect. So the crazy part is the mind works on what it sees. Again, so that's why I show pictures. The mind works on what it sees and when you write down stuff. That's why when your pre professor say, hey, take notes. You can remember easily when you wrote something down, like, oh, let me go back. I think I, I had that in, you know, around May or whenever the case may be. I remember I wrote something down about that versus trying to remember everything somebody tells you. You're going to walk out and you might not remember, you know, in the future, but the vision board helps. Certainly some of these things have already, you know, already happened. Didn't even know it. <coughs> Trips have happened. Um, certain situation, everything has happened. Not all of it, but a lot of it has happened. So if y'all haven't, please take my, if you don't take anything else, take the vision board, do it. Um, now these are some of the, you know, uh, some of the things I've done. Uh, again, the PSU Civil Rights Tour, um, Dare to Hope. I don't know if we have time to show it. Um, I would love to, to show you um, the inspiring thing that one of my, my homegirls did, but um, I just don't know how this computer's gonna work or react if I click on it, so we're just gonna skip it for now. But I, I have a way for y'all to find it, so. Um, just bear with me. Um, but again, when I talk about support system, having people around you that believe in you. This is, this is, my, this is my immediate family. It's my uncle, my mom, my dad, my sister, my little cousin, my brother. You know, very supportive people, very understanding of what it takes. Um, they see my struggles, so they build me up when, when times are tough. And then they bring me down when my head gets a little too, too big. You know what I mean? You need, you need those people around you. Whether it's actual family members, whether it's friends. You know what I mean? You need that. Um, again, you know, buddies of mine who are now at the top of their profession, we started at the same time. One is one of the head marketing execs at Twitter, one uh, a and for Sony and music, another and two of them, you know, at ESPN. Um, but surrounding yourself with like-minded people. Everybody in this room obviously came here for a reason. Whether you came here just to support me or whether you came to support Dean Selden, whatever the case may be, you came here because you wanted to get an advancement in some way, shape or form. Surrounding yourself with those same people, Trust me, they say it takes, if you're around five billionaires, you're, you're bound to be the six. Same thing with if you're hanging around busted, negative-minded people, you're bound to be that sixth person. So put yourself around people that you think will help you. Um, again, me and Rob Hardy, after talking with him and networking, this guy lived around the corner from me growing up. Had no idea. So it just was affirming to me to be like, well, if you've done all these movies uh, and you're only you know, 10 years older than me, you know, what's to say that the next 10 years couldn't be the same for me? Again, you know what I mean, just, just positive thoughts, just trying to make myself, you know, believe in, you know, what I'm doing as well. Um, again, ha ha anybody heard of Eric Thomas, the hip-hop preacher? You heard of him? So Eric Thomas travels, he's the number three motivational speaker in the world now. Dropped out of high school, w d was on the streets living homeless, to the point where he's the number three motivational speaker in the world. He's best friends, Warren Buffett, Dan Gilbert. He can talk to 16-year-olds and incarcerated to Warren Buffett and have a boardroom meeting. That's, that's power. I didn't know none of these guys five months ago. None of them. It's because I extended myself. I put myself around people who were like-minded. I got a connection. I represented myself well. We went. I met one guy. He leads me to the next guy. Next thing I know, I can, dial, I can pick up the phone and dial any of these guys. This guy here, Nehemiah Davis, doing great things in Philly. The guy in the hat in the red, his name is David Shans. He's got a, a clothing line called Sleepers for Suckers where we go around to Atlanta, we're doing a Black Wall Street tour. If you heard of Black Wall Street, it was a, a time in Tulsa, Oklahoma, where black businesses owned everything. They, they had the banks, the medicine, um, hospitals, all that. Well, we decided to empower these kids in high school who might not have an understanding of what entrepreneurship was. We asked, how many people know somebody successful? Kids couldn't raise their hand. How many people know anybody who graduated college? Couldn't raise their hand. How many know anybody who owns their own business? Nobody could raise their hand. After we left, we, didn't, we went on for a month. Kids were crying. I got a video of kids crying. Like, thank you so much for coming here. We needed this. Teachers begging us to come back to their school. Stuff like that. People, people take away what you give them. So we were inspiring these kids to the point where now we weren't doing this for money. Now other states are asking us to come to their schools and talk and bring life to their kids. You know, some people don't get this positive affirmation at home of what they need. 
So again, align yourself with the right people. Um, now, this is a throwback picture of me, this is my little sister. Look at her face, man. <laughs> I know, it's hilarious. So. <laughs> Love her so much. But like, so I, I, I never would have thought, you know what I mean? Like this, this kid right here from Germantown, I think it's like my sixth birthday. I don't even know. <laughs> like, this, who would have thought this guy right here would have had the opportunity to, you know what I mean, grow up, be sitting in seats right here, listening to professors, then seven, eight years later, you know, coming here, standing in front of y'all, and I'm just going to, you know, give y'all a preview. Who, who, who would have had the opportunity to think that I, you know, I mean, be standing here, you know, I mean, with, with my own Emmy, with my name on it? Not seven years ago, sitting in this seat, I probably listen. To, I, I think Bob Costas came when I was, was here. And, you know, Bob Costas is cool, and all, but like Bob Costas didn't come up here with the Emmy. You know what I mean? Like, uh, that, you know what I mean? That was that, that, that was big for me, man. I, and like, I brought it here today. I traveled on a plane. People thought I had a bomb because I'm on this plane with a big old box. But I brought it here today because I wanted y'all to see that it's possible. You know what I mean? So in, in life after Penn State, you know, you know, finding your purpose. The way you find your purpose is recognizing your gifts. You, everybody has a gift. Whether, you know, obviously, you, you, I can't tell you what your gift is. You recognize what you're good at. If it, it takes the least effort, that's probably your gift. So your gift is three Gs. Your gift, you know, identifying your goals, and then grinding. That's what, that's what identify your purpose. When you're on, on path to find your purpose, money, money is not the root, you know what I mean, of, of it. That shouldn't be your purpose to, to gain money. The money going to find you if you're doing the right things and putting yourself around the right people, doing it for the right reasons. So, like I said, like, who would have thought this kid right here would have been able to bring, these are my 80-plus-year-old you know, year grandparents who would never, they ain't know nobody with an Emmy. Now they can say their grandson, you know. Um, you know they, 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 they took a, I took a picture. I had to, uh, again, I had to let y'all know. This, this picture to me you know, represents, like, yo, if I can do it, you can do it too. All y'all here, I got, a, I got a sports broadcasting journalism degree. I got an Emmy, and like I said, and some other prestigious awards to the point where you know, I'm, I'm here to let y'all know that it's possible. You, you, have, you have gifts that you can utilize now. You know, take advantage now. You got the most resources you probably ever have in your life right here, right now. When you go to, you can, you can rent cameras, you can do whatever you want. You got the top professors who can tell you exactly how the game goes. The experiences that you need, you can use it now, utilize it. You know what I mean? If, you, if, you, if I said, you know, I don't even know how many people we got in here, maybe let's say 50 people. If I said I only came in here for five people to change their life, like five of y'all in here is going to change the world. Like not just go graduate, get a degree, but change the world. Like create some documentary or write some, you know, uh, music or whatever it is that you, 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 you're going to do, it's going to change the world. If I told five of you, who would y'all think that is? Is you? <laughs> that, that, but, but seriously, I mean, that, that's, 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 how, that's how you have to think. Like you have to think like that. You know you, you know you put here for a reason. You're not here to just, you know, work a mundane nine to five and just, you know, do somebody else. It's either you building your dream or you building somebody else's. What's your choice? You can change the world. Like I said, like the people come before you and they showed you. You know, I'm uh, seven years out. I'm, I'm, I'm thankful. I'm humble, but I'm hungry. I'm still hungry. I'm ready to change the world. I came here to talk the life into y'all and change the world. You know what I mean? I'm here to inspire y'all. So if five of y'all... You know, 10 of y'all email me, tweet me, you know, five years, 10 years from now, I said, Kyle, you came to my school and said that you, you're not good. You said I wasn't going to be good. You said I would have been like, you know what? You was the 10th person I was talking about because I said 10 of y'all was going to change the world. But I'm hoping that everybody in here can do that. I'm hoping that y'all all can take something I, you know, I gave y'all today and, you know, really just utilize it to the best of your advantage. Um, and then just pay it forward. This is uh, Damian Lillard, you know, NBA, or reigning uh, rookie of the year. Um, uh, this was for the Special Olympics. We're playing basketball. This kid comes to me and he's like, yo, man, this is the greatest day of my life. Man, those, that, that sentence right there just, just shook me up because I'm like, man, this is the greatest day of your life, man. Like, I, don't, I don't know what you've been through. I don't know, I don't know what your, your symptoms, I don't know what your cause is, you know, whatever. But if, you, if I took my time out to, to, to get back to you and it's the greatest day of your life, think about how many more people I can, I can do that to. So like I said, I started my company not to make millions of dollars, but if I get 100 people to say, Kyle, that documentary you did on marriage changed my life. That documentary you did on homelessness changed my life. Then my job is done. I'm inspiring y'all to do what y'all want to do, changing lives. 
So I, I, I'm, I'm here today to say, yo, pay it for whatever you learn today. You know, you can start now. Mentor a freshman. He a freshman. He said freshman. Yo, bring him to, you know, a lecture that you think would be pertinent for him. Bring him to a, an event that you think will help. You know what I mean? Paying it forward. Because it's not, we can't take no possessions with us. Even though I got it, when I go, it's not, they're not putting it in the casket with me. None of that. You know what I mean? But well, whatever works that I do, I leave here, is what y'all going to take away from it. So, but I do need y'all to do me a favor. Everybody got smartphones? So help me achieve my dream. Right now, my short-term goal is to get 500 followers on Instagram. 500. By June. I'm, this is, this, so when I say in October, I'm trying to get 1,000. I'm, I'm making short attainable goals. So it, it's just, just as spelled, marvelous entertainment. If y'all could go on for me, do it, follow. I promise I'll follow everybody back. I'm not one of the people that won't follow. I follow back. All right, and I don't, like I said, it's a brand. Whatever you got on your Instagram, I should be able to go on your Instagram now, and I can tell you a lot about yourself in the couple pictures I look at. If you got pictures of food, you like to eat. <laughs> if you, uh, like, you know what I mean? Like, you ain't gonna see nothing I said. No booty shaking, no nothing. It's all inspirational, positive. So please, um, I got a, you know, Facebook. If you could, you know, find me on Facebook, find me on YouTube, subscribe. You know, it helps get the momentum going. Um, but I, I really appreciate y'all, and I, you know, I want to get this opportunity to, you know, open up for questions. If y'all do have any, um, I, I would love to, you know, kind of answer and, you know, do what I can. So, uh, anyway. Does anybody have any questions? What's the best advice your parents ever gave you? Um, the best advice they ever gave me to give them credit. No, um, uh, the best advice really was just to, to to work hard and like why not me? That was one of the things they always like showed me. Like you know, I I did uh, I did dance when I was growing up and like my friends would tease me or stuff like that. Like you know, I, I it actually benefited me for sports. But you know, they're like Kyle, why not you? What why why just you know leave it to somebody else to dictate how you're going to do your li you know live your life? If everybody jump off a bridge, would you do it too? And at the time, I was like, probably so, because that seemed like the cool thing to do. But like, why not you? You know what I mean? So I realized that early on, if I could embrace that you know philosophy of why not me, like I could be the change. Like let me just ad adopt that, and that's you know one of the best things you know that they really you know instilled in me. Um, Um, that's a, that's a good question. Um, I, I would I would definitely find some ways to get involved in whatever areas you're looking to change that community. So if it's um, addressing homelessness, then you know you know getting out there early. So you know, like I said, you got the disposal now to get to any camera that you want. You know whether it's you know a lot of times people who are homeless don't like to take pictures, um, but if you can get them to open up to kind of tell their story, then what you're doing might help somebody who is sitting in a room like this. You know, and God forbid anybody becomes homeless, but as of recently, I ran into some high school friends on the street asking for money, and not until I got close that I recognized who they were. Had I been able to take advantage early and kind of give, you know, some light into it, maybe I could have helped prevent that. So, you know, use whatever skills that you have. If it's writing, you know, maybe it's a, a blog or a journal, something that you can, you know, give, um, you know, a dialogue for people to understand, you know, what that, whatever area you're trying to change. Um, but really just taking advantage of whatever, whatever opportunities and research you have here um, will be my, my best advice. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so my question is, what, what was kind of like the biggest challenge of leaving you know, the security of something like ESPN and kind of just taking on your own adventure? Like, what were just some of the things that kind of went into that? Um, well, one, I didn't go to school for business because, you know I mean, I, I'm a journalism or communication major. But um, one was just trying to learn um, what it took to, you know, start. So I had to do a lot of research. Um, I did it in a year, and in hindsight, I might have taken a little more time to really figure out all the facets, but there's never a, a, a time where it's perfect to jump. Um, and I thought that, you know, I was, I was eager to leave, but at the same time nervous because I'm used to having that stability. So um, it took a lot of confidence. Um, while answering questions for people as, as how I wasn't ready, it allowed me to, you know, uh, affirm in myself and be confident that I could do it. So, um, you know, one of the things was identifying, you know, what market I wanted to take advantage of, um, what areas that I wanted to, you know, thrive in, um, you know, who who were my, you know, competitors and who I could network with. So even though I was living in Connecticut, I was making phone calls to people in Atlanta a lot. But it wasn't, I couldn't, I can't do the work if I'm not there. So I needed to get out and physically start meeting people. 
um, just developing um, a, a work ethic. So I'm used to working nine to five. So people told me what to do. I knew how to get in. You know, I had a structure. I knew Monday through Friday I had something to do. I was even there Saturday and Sunday. But now I'm doing it on my own. I'm responsible for my financial well-being. If I don't get up, if I'm lazy, you know, hanging out the night before and then, you know, I got nothing to do, but I'm not taking advantage of it, then I was really, uh, that was a, another day loss of money or, or wages, you know what I mean? So it was just trying to get myself prepared and geared to owning my own business and answering my own calls. So um, going from, like I said, somebody telling me what to do to figuring out what I had to do every day. I left with zero clients. Now I got between 15 and 25 clients. So, you know what I mean, just building that and being patient and like I said, enjoying the process and the experience. Um, those, those were definitely like some of the biggest. Um, but. Um, that, 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 that depends on, you know, where you think you can get in. A Atlanta is a, a, is a smaller market versus, you know, LA. Everybody out there waits on tables at night to act during the daytime or vice versa. So you have a lot of competition versus, um, in Atlanta you have a lot of a competition, but there aren't as many outlets for you. Like there's a lot of opportunity for you to, um, to get involved but there aren't as many sets as it would be in, you know, in Hollywood. So it really depends on which way you want to attack it. If you want to attack a small group of people and then just stand out, then you can do that. Um, there's a lot of developing talent in Atlanta. So you would be in the emerging versus trying to submerge yourself into a developed area like you know, LA where you know, people wouldn't, you would, you would really have to grind and set, separate yourself from your competitors for you to you know, land that role. But, um, you know, it, it just, it, it's really depending on what you want to do. Anybody else? Mr. President. So, you got the two bodies, you got the enemy, mm -hmm. you travel all across the country, you do all kind of work with students and stuff. What would you say is your big, biggest success and how would you measure that? Um, big, honestly, man, the biggest success is probably, one of them is today, to be honest. Like, just to, just to have the opportunity to come back here and, and see, like, you know, everybody's beautiful face, I mean, giving me the attention and taking the time to, to really come out and uh, listen to me. Um, I, I never thought that, I mean, Penn State would have me come back and, and, and speak, but, you know, uh, obviously with the, you know, the credit of Dean Seldon and, you know, Carmen Frost and, you know, um, UPAC, you know, it, it, really, it really came true. So, um, you know, now it's just, it's just one of those stepping stones where I think um, this has provided me with, um, I, obviously you see I, I recorded it because I want, to allow other people to understand that, you know, this isn't just, obviously I love Penn State and I'm going to do whatever I can because it's my alma mater, but, you know, if I can travel around the country and do the same thing for other people to let them know, um, one, of the, one of the moments that almost made me cry, man, I, I was trying to hold back the tears because I'm a thug. <laughs> like what I wanted to do, man, uh, had a, I had a woman from um, around my neighborhood in the barbershop and she came to me and she said, um, Kyle, you made it. She was like, you made it. Like, you don't understand, you made it. You know, you're from this neighborhood and a lot of kids getting killed, a lot of kids getting locked up, incarcerated. And, you, and, and she saw the word and she's like, you made it. Like, you don't understand. Like, you are, you are a successful young African-American who came from the inner city and now you've got some prestigious awards that people dream of. And to me, that, it, wasn't, it wasn't receiving, the award was great. When I won, I jumped up, I, I did my little Michael Jordan, Tiger Woods fist pump was excited but it wasn't until the reaction of seeing people react to the award that kind of got me like man maybe i am doing something right um so but the combination of today and the combination of you know me seeing people react to it has probably been the, the one if not two biggest you know i feel like successes one more uh and one more so what's next what's next <laughs> um <laughs> That's a great question. That's a great question. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping. I'm hoping that what I can do is uh, is, is is direct my first uh, documentary film to uh, present to a film festival um, within the next year. So m my goal is a year from now, if I can present it at Tribeca, Sundance, on the film festivals, um, that would be huge. Right now, I'm working on like uh, three different documentaries, um, but. I, I don't know which one right now has the possibility of taking off. I kind of got to see how they develop. But um, one of the biggest ones that hopefully I can have y'all you know, help out on eventually is um, Daring to be Different, which is just a documentary on people 
who decide to go outside the box and not do the mundane, regular, but you know, challenging themselves to be the best person that they can be and really taking advantage of an opportunity and changing, like I said, changing the world, inspiring, and just you know, allowing people to understand that you know, we're putting this planet to change the world. We're not here to you know, um, you know, take anything with us, but to leave an impact. So um, that hopefully, hopefully you'll see that within the next year. Good. Well, if I may, I have a final question. <laughs> What's that, sir? <laughs> this is what you call me, Well, no, you got to realize I am so proud of you. Oh, thanks, sir. Because thanks. I can remember when you were sitting in the chairs that these students were sitting in, and look at you now. Uh. Um, I'm just honored. Um, very just chest full of pride to see that you, on your own initiative, wanted to give back to Penn State. You didn't have to take the time after your Emmy to say, hey, Dean Selden, I'd like to come and talk to the students. You, you could have stayed in Hollywood, <laughs> you know? But you initiated that whole, this whole presentation. It came from you. So to me, I'm just so pleased that the students are able to embrace you. Um, I just simply want to let you know how proud we are of you. Uh, because yes. you, you learned a lot when you were here at Penn State. And just your demeanor and giving back to Penn State is the Penn State way. And just so proud that you're a Penn Stater. I see that some of your fraternity brothers are here. Yes, sir. I'm glad that they came out. Uh, didn't know that your folks were coming. We're just delighted to have you both here. And i um, going to let our students kind of wrap this up. But we're going to have, and really don't want any of you all to leave us, because part of the richness of having a speaker, of having an alum, is when we go back to 208 Carnegie, we've got some food set up. We like for the students to have an opportunity to personally get to meet you and get close to this Emmy, because uh, I, I don't think any of us have gotten this close. <laughs> <laughs> We've seen it on TV and all that, but to see one of our alums possessing an Emmy is huge. So congratulations, and, and really thank you for taking the time to be with us. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Thank you.